hello i'm making a video with papa dog next to me it is beautiful weather outside and it is cozy and i went in the jacuzzi and there is a blue jay out there and i don't know what to say Anyway, it's uh, just nice. It's a nice afternoon and I decided I'm gonna make a video. And my husband told me good news and it's always amazing to hear some good news once in a while. The Saudi prince has now made it legal for women to drive. Wow, you know, I mean, this guy is already super advanced and everything. He just has to had to go slow with this process because obviously he's outnumbered with all kinds of horrific religious people. And so he had to go very slow with this. He had to give them a lot of cookies first. Yeah, come here, come wild animal, come I give you a cookie. Okay. Um, much worse, this is a much worse situation than luring a wild bear in or a wild coor. So, cookie, I got a cookie for you, a lot of cookies. And so then they got a little tamer. And so then finally, because he has a lot of power already, thank goodness, a good person and power. Yeah. So then he had a lot of people who tried to push him out and he was able, he's a very genius person, a God level soul, only a God level soul can manage this in Saudi Arabia. Okay. And his wife is also a God level soul as well. They're both unbelievably amazing and they work together of course on this and the human rights activists very strongly and um, so they want to bring peace to Saudi Arabia they want to make it westernized also it's gonna create more business it's gonna create a better relation to the world and so on um, a person like myself would at this point not travel to Dubai, you know, even though Dubai or Abu Dhabi are places where there's a whole lot going on, there are amazing buildings by Saha Hadid, my favorite architect in the world. But I would not drive there, I would not fly out there because I don't want to be stoned to death. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, you, I'm i already a wild person, uh, even in the Western world. So me going out there, that would be, I wouldn't even, I, I would feel so afraid to make any, to say or behave in any way. I, f I would feel boxed up, like like a mummy or something. Yeah, I would... I wouldn't know what to say, what to do, how to dress, how to mimic my face. The wrong move could get me into prison. So, yeah, so he wants to change that. He wants to liberate them. He wants to free them. That's, that's what Judy Krishnamurti and Dr. David Bohm and Dr. David Schoenberg were discussing in Brockwood Park, England, 1974 when they were talking about how things are managed that the majority of people worldwide is not ready to understand a lot of things about psychology, about themselves, about their own ego, about their self-image making, about the problems that are all coming from the self-image making, which is, you know, religion is one of those many things that the ego creates and um, of course the people who are religious who are clinging to religions will never accept that and so it's a very slow very 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 dragging dragging 
process with a lot of brakes on it, uh, squealing brakes, you know, moving forward, breaking, breaking itself, stopping itself in the process because of the religion stepping it on its own feet. So how can this move forward? It takes really a God level soul, soul to move this forward. And I am very grateful to see this, you know. I am very happy to see this development in Saudi Arabia, wonderful. And once they start this, then the other countries will gradually follow. Only gradually, it's always gradually, because most people are afraid. Most people will shut up and never say anything because they're afraid. When that happens, progress is not happening. When you are afraid to speak up, when you're afraid to say something, no progress is going to happen because it depends on you. It depends on every single one of us to have the courage and to, to stand outside the box, stand outside society and outside the the oppression, you know, the the ego fabricated norms of society that has that has habituated itself over time and has aggravated itself over time. Then fear makes it worse, you know, people being afraid will give in, then the oppressors will take more of the rain in their hands, more of their le more of the leverage. It's always a tug of war sort of thi thing, you know. If you're afraid, you give terrible customs the right of way, and they will oppress all of you even more and more and more. It can happen anywhere, okay? It's happening particular in particular in the Middle East and Africa so severely because obviously the bad people survived. It is a tough, tough survival struggle has been for the last couple of thousands of years okay, because of heat, because of droughts, because of water shortage the biggest ego has won the water and has taken over and has procreated. This is a fact, okay, it's the evolutionary fact. Um, the mild, mellow, kind person has been killed in the process and it is absolutely, it's horrific what's happening. It's, it's, it's reversed eugenics, you know, that's what's happening. And it's a fact, you know, this can be seen as racist or politically incorrect. It's still a fact, okay? The fact is still standing. So to see a prince, to see a real prince, to see a real God-level soul, a God-level soul, that's very rare already in the world, but to see a God-level soul in Saudi Arabia, and not just someone who is, who doesn't have leverage, you know, there's, there are some God level souls in the world who don't have any leverage. And some of them make it up anyway, make it up the ladders in, in to the front door or the back door. If they're God level souls, they can do this, they're able to do this. They have that they have what it takes to, they have that grandness to be good to people, to be relaxed, to be calm, to understand where other people are coming from, to understand that they do not know better, obviously. They have evolved that way. They do not know better. 
and they all want cookies. They all want and want and want as much as as possible. It will never stop with the wanting. You photo, 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 photo. You more photo, more. I want more, 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 more. I want to more, want to, 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 want to rape, 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 and then kill, kill, and then uh, who knows what else is gonna be on the list. Okay, so it's like taking, taking, taking because there is a void inside and, and they can't see that. They only see reality around them which appears as super real. And they have, they, they're, they're psychologically impoverished. And out of this psychological impoverished state and this unempowerment state, they would they think that they need to force themselves they need f to use force they need to use violence okay. i see this also among animals you know also evolution again the the most forceful bird will take all the the, the sunflower seeds and the other ones are left with the rest and they don't get that much, you know, the squirrels, you know, this is earth evolution. It doesn't have to be that way. And um, there are people now on this planet who see that and who know how to, at least from their own leverage and from their momentum from their gaining of leverage from their from the path that they know how to create to get from A to B they know that things can be managed and can be shifted and so it takes those type of people to shift things and move things forward because the blue collar worker cannot see this Okay, there's a very distinct difference in people's brains and there's a dis distinct intelligence difference and this is highly unpopular to discuss but this is the case. I don't know. The prince is also Saudi and so I'm not talking race here. Okay. What I'm trying to say is and maybe this is maybe these people really they really don't know better you know they have they have evolved that way it's genetics it's also epigenetics it's also environment it's it's all it all plays in you know when a, when someone doesn't have the amygdala very built up which are representative for very high compassion for another living being when that is not very built up then what can we expect from that individual, right? So that it, individual will just take and take and take and will never see the other living being and will certainly also never see into the future. You know, the, the most they see into the future is only for their self-advantage. Okay. People like that prince, they see much farther than that. Okay, They see... They see human rights, they see another individual, they, they see the suffering, they see the global suffering, they see, they see the suffering on large scales, and they see how things can be maneuvered on a large scale, and, and much larger scales. So, so that's how they operate, okay, very gradually, very patiently, they, they move things forward towards a better world and when Saudi Arabia becomes a better world than it has been for thousands of years in the past then things are going to move forward and I am so deeply deeply grateful to that prince and his wife and everyone and every God level soul on this planet who gives their expertise and their learning process and their and their their kindness and their compassion for other living beings and 
these people, they're much more advanced than I am. You know, I see, I get angry. I don't see in those moments that they are, they don't know better. You know, I can say that later, much later. Oh, why did I act like this? These people don't know better. When I feel better, I can say that. These people never get to the point where they get frustrated or angry because they know what they're dealing with. Do I get frustrated with the wind? That's what Eckhart Tolle said. Do I get frustrated with a wave from the ocean that knocks me into the sand and flushes away my sunglasses? No, it happened many times in Playa del Rey. I never got mad at the ocean. So, this is how we need to work. This is how the prince works. He sees terrible people that are completely brain damaged, maybe by birth, maybe, and and also because of this horrific religion that he star- is trying very gradually to phase out and to make things modern and kind. Religion is not kind, people. Okay, this is very difficult for a lot of people to understand. It seems like I've had a lot of debates on this. Come talk to me if you don't agree. We can talk about it. Okay, and also I want to know why are you so afraid to talk to me on Google Hangout? What is it? You know, it's like I felt like a complete doofus. You know, in the end, it's like I tried so hard to get people to sign up on that. And one guy out of Pakistan, one my my best friend on Facebook from New York State, and um, and a few other people who initially said yes, of course, but then when the time comes, they leave me in the dust. Okay, they totally the the run off and um, I don't blame you I know it's I was a little nervous too the night before that I had anxiety I have anxiety too all the time particularly when something comes up and um, and there's time for me to anticipate something that's always a problem and so I understand that very well but I want to assure you that, and, and one guy even commented, is are there going to be experts on that panel? <laughs> no experts, zero experts, okay? We're all life experts, all of you, you, all of you, okay? You made it so far, so you're a life expert. Um, this, is, this is a complete harmless, nice, casual, friendly, non-judgmental discussion, and everyone can say whatever they want to say, whatever they want to ask, okay? And I try to, I give my best to answer it with the knowledge I have, okay? I don't have all the knowledge I don't, I, I don't have infinite knowledge. There's no such thing as omniscience, by the way. Anyone who claims to be omniscient is utterly deluded. Any guru who says, I have attained omniscience, right there it is a red alarm lamp, alarm lamp coming on, flashing, and saying, that dude, no. Don't go, don't go there. Take a U-turn and go away from that person. You do not want a yoga lesson or meditation lesson from someone who says he is omniscient. And I can tell you 100% why. Because there is no such thing as omniscience. It doesn't exist. And the reason why is mathematical. It's a mathematical, logistic reason for this. Because knowledge never ends. Knowledge keeps going just as much as the blue god, the blue sky. 
keeps going and uh, and it gets darker and darker as you drive out there into space gets darker and darker and darker and then you pass by some supernovas uh, supernovae is the plural and then you pass by some stars and suns and exploding things and and it's dark again and then it flashes up again and you get to the the Orion Nebula and there is a whole lot going on and it just keeps on going and going and going and going and never ends this is very scary for a lot of mam mammalian brains. So I think the whales are they're more advanced. They probably understand that. So the whales and dolphins, they have a lot of compassion for humans. They don't understand why humans are so mean because it's hard for them to, to wrap their minds around living on land with gravity and how difficult it is and how evolution works on land. The mean guy survives, the mean guy who is the most angry and usually also the most fearful, you know, so anger and fear go hand in hand. Yeah, fear out of resources running out. So in the ocean it's a completely different medium, it's a different lifestyle. There used to be abundance, now it's no longer, there's no longer abundance because of overfishing caused by the land mammal human, the aggressive mean one who takes and takes and does not give to anyone, does not have any vision. So that's why the oceans are now being overfished and the food is taken away from the whales and dolphins and they are wondering why they why these humans are doing this why most of them are doing this they know that there are differences between humans they know that they're they're very rare people like paul watson and one whale has communicated with paul watson per telepathy just through eye contact and he has conveyed a message in thought form and he says i I feel sorry for you humans. I feel sorry for your species. I feel sorry that you are in the grip of this incredibly awful evolutionary draw of the mean guy surviving and then only having like less than 1%, maybe 0.001%, something like this, of people who actually risk their lives to save another living being that is out of a, of their own species, that's not of their own species. Okay. That is a very, very rare thing that happens, and the whale understood that. So, yeah, it is, um, it is a grave situation, and so every time someone is amazing on this planet. Someone has a very advanced level soul and we shouldn't be jealous of these people. We shouldn't take this again as a put down towards ourselves because most people run around with shame constantly. This, the shame sits right under the surface. You know, it's like the, the, they snap at the drop of a hat. You know, someone loses their hat and they feel shamed again just by the way the hat fell or by the way the person eye, person's eyebrow twitched for a second. They feel shamed. I've seen this, I've seen this in person and in, in, in operation. I've seen this live on the streets okay, in LA. It was frightening. It was really, really scary. I could have been killed several times because people would misunderstand my depression as a rejection against them. So I was running around depressed with, some, with a depressed facial expression while I was doing primal therapy. And a lot of people would take this as a rejection or as some kind of frown against them or some kind of looking down on, on them or looking at them with a critical eye or something. You know, my husband told me that I have an expression like this sometimes. And sometimes I do have a critical eye when I look at people. 
uh, it it happens I can't hide it and so yeah this is frightening when the people have when the people snap and when they don't have the prefrontal cortex activity very strongly and 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 securely running so when there is a short circuit between the hippocampus and the amygdala then the person can snap and doesn't ha doesn't understand the consequences uh, the consequential thinking is shut off and then the emotional reactions thinking has taken a short circuit and that's like like an electric light bulb burning itself out you know? it's on on super high heat and electricity and that's what happens in the brain as well with those people so that's a that's a huge thing okay and so so when someone has a high compassion center then it takes a lot longer for this short circuit to to burn itself out that way you know so when you have compassion you see the other person but when they are when they are completely absorbed with the with the shame feelings then it it bypasses this compassion action in the brain and that's why there are so many people who drive over others who are fundamentally religious fanatically terrorists and so on and who murder, rape, plunder, steal and and all these horrible things that are going on it's because because of the Dr. Adrian Rain talks about it so it's a combination of things okay, no compassion center low resting heart rate no fear and um, and also anger and avoid inside you know they they haven't been loved so it's all these things that are coming together that will create this type of reaction or this uh, faulty decision making and the and the lack of compassion in this process and being totally absorbed only with their own needs and wants that are happening right now in this moment okay seems to be the case probably with the majority of humans probably with 70 percent but it's only about 20 percent of people who have and that's they found that out through studies through observing people on the freeways in the desert okay they were there were actually 20 percent of people who deliberately drove out of their ways risking their own car and their own lives and the lives in the car that, uh, of other beings to drive over the turtle uh, to deliberately hurt another living being so and that was filmed and it's 20 percent and that's a very shocking high number okay. those are the people who actually risk something to do it the number of people who would do it too if they didn't risk any s injury to themselves may be much higher than that so that hasn't been explored yet but there are other studies I've talked about this before that lady artist in what was that in Bulgaria she did a live performance art where she let people do to her what they wanted to do today would probably not be possible because there was somewhere in the 70s that was during some kind of there was a new revolutionary time where things were kind of tumultuous with lot of, lots of things were misunderstood in terms of permissiveness and stuff like that that has changed since then but um, the people in that room, there, there was a huge amount of people, the customers in that gallery, that would do absolutely horrific things to her. You know, 
that would make her, that cut her skin and cut her neck and stuff like this, and would drink her blood and would would handle her breasts, would take all of her clothes off, would tie sh metal strings around her and wrap her and and she she was so afraid that they might kill her even. She was so afraid that when she got home she had a whole strand, real big strand of white hair suddenly and she was only in her twenties and she had almost black hair. So big batch of white hair that where the color just suddenly left the hair. And uh, out of fear, you know, stress can cause this. And it's just another shocking example of when people feel safe for themselves and, and they think that that's permitted, that they, they can get away with it. There is another huge amount of people who will do something terrible to another living being because just because it's permitted by the law or by the person or whatever. There are homeless people. They are so down and out. They need a dollar. So they all they all actually do incredibly horrible. Th they let people do horrible things to them just for a dollar. And these people will do it. They'll say, here, I'll give you a dollar. Now I can hurt you. I can do terrible things to you. This is the mindset, seems like, of the majority of humans. Then we have some education. We have religions never worked anyway on this. Very, very poor. It works very poorly. People do terrible things anyway, as soon as no one looks. And... Um, some people are afraid of their gods or their imaginary gods, uh, punishing them for this or that. But uh, but the rules are always written by some people in power and m managed in a way to serve the people in power. So the rules don't make any sense at all. They're contradictory. They have nothing to do with ethics. So people are also very confused about all of this, but I think that if people were taught, if the majority of people were taught ethics, real ethics, that I think only a small amount of people would get it and or would get it on some level, but the majority will probably only see this as another law and will not see it as truth and will not understand it and will act out as soon as they feel like the situation is clear for them to do a terrible thing again to someone else. So when the compassion is not there in the brain, how can this be, how can it be taught? How can compassion be taught? That doesn't mean we shouldn't teach it. I teach it all the time. Because if I gave up and said, no, I'm not going to teach it because how can this be taught? It's, uh, it's hardwired in the brain. Then I can already give up. Last night I was again in a, in a situation where I, felt, where I cried to my husband and I said, I, the world is in total chaos. I've had a conversation with someone on Facebook that shocked me so much. And it's just another glimpse into society of someone who is, was willing to talk about it. Most people are not willing to talk about it. Most people are not willing to to show their all of their their shady sides. And um, I see some people have the need to talk about it because it's bothering them. Also, there are some heavy neurotic circuiting going on in the brain that they feel like they can't even break free from anymore. Yeah. Some heavy addictive addictive behavior, some, some childhood pain of repressed sexuality that is being acted out later on and being projected onto things in later adult life. And... Um, 
and they have no idea where this comes from but they see someone like me who who who's a no bullshit person and they feel safe enough to talk about it and I've had I had a lot of people off and on in my life reveal things to me because they, f they suddenly felt like there's someone they could trust at least to listen to them at least for a couple of days or something and that takes lifts off a huge burden from a lot of people so I tell people you know it is childhood pain and don't beat yourself up over it you know, this is uh, that then you have another convoluted problem and more guilt and more shame and more problems the shame has already been done in childhood you know. so people run around with mountains of guilt and shame and they can and they, they can't break out of it it just becomes even more convoluted and more perverted in, in a lot of cases and more um, and more neurotic and more projections going on and more unconsciousness. So that's why I think it is absolutely vital that we start thinking about these things and become conscious. So I have to cut it off now because if it's too long then it won't upload. So anyway I hope this video sheds some light on something, helps a little bit, and all I can say is I keep teaching it because there are always some people that will hear it and that will benefit from this. Okay, you guys take care. Bye-bye.